kakosh kalabala kete bara regado shakat halabala kete bara ude regado shakat ha the spirit of the living god is identified with the person and the activity of the godhead that means the spirit of god work together with christ and god the father so if the spirit of god is identified with the activity of the godhead that means the spirit of god is divine the spirit of the living god is of eternal origin and the spirit of god is god himself because there is no how you can separate the spirit of god from god no personality in this universe can separate the spirit of god from god so the spirit of god is identified with god and it means that the spirit of god is god in act of the apostle chapter 5 verse 3 to 4 he says but peter said unto ananias why has satan feed thy heart to lie to the holy ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land why it remained was it not thy own and after it was sold was it not in thy own power why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart thou hast not lied unto men but unto god so in verse 3 of act of the apostle chapter 5 he says thou hast lied to the holy ghost in verse 4 he said thou hast not lied unto men but unto god so ananias lie unto god by deceiving the spirit of god so the spirit of the living god is god the holy spirit is god in first corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 it says know ye not that ye are the temple of god and that the spirit of god dwelleth in you that was supposed to paul speaking to the christians at corinth that your body is the temple of god and the spirit of god dwelleth in you if our body is the temple of god that means god is dwelling in us by his spirit the spirit of god dwelling in our body is god himself the spirit of god dwelling in our body is god because the spirit of god is divine the spirit of god is of eternal origin the spirit of god is the eternal spirit of god so eternity is dwelling in the realm of humanity by the spirit of god the spirit of god is in the church that means eternity is dwelling in the realm of humanity by the spirit of god in the church So the spirit of the living God is identified with the person and activity of the Godhead. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 to 18, it says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. In verse 18, it says, But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the lord i change into the same image from glory to glory if we as by the spirit of the lord we behold him as in a glass the glory of the lord that glory of the lord is the glory of the holy spirit because the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there is liberty in the church because the spirit of the lord is in the church and as we behold that spirit as we behold the glory of the spirit that is dwelling in us or dwelling in the church we are being changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the lord that is in us so the spirit of god is called lord the spirit of god is called lord there is a lord in us there is a lord dwelling in us 
and that lord is the spirit of god that is in us and that is why we must be very careful not to blaspheme the spirit of god we must be very careful not to blaspheme the spirit of god in go in the gospel of matthew chapter 12 verse 32 please listen to me and get this point it says and whosoever speaketh the word against the son of god he shall be forgiven him but whosoever speaketh against the holy ghost he shall not be forgiven him neither in this world neither in the world to come so blasphemy against the holy spirit has no forgiveness and what is blasphemy against the holy spirit blasphemy against the holy spirit is the rejection of salvation is the rejection of the lordship of jesus is the rejection of the lordship of christ jesus this is the rejection of salvation and without the acceptance and the confession of the lordship of jesus christ there is no salvation you must believe that jesus christ is your lord that is when you can receive salvation hallelujah are we still together please in the gospel of mark chapter 3 verse 29 it says but he that shall blaspheme against the holy ghost has never forgiveness but is in danger of eternal damnation you can see not just earthly damnation is in danger of earthly damnation and also eternal damnation it has eternal consequence so that means blasphemy against the holy ghost means rejection of salvation in luke chapter 12 verse 10 he says and whosoever shall speak a word against the son of man he shall be forgiven him if you shall speak a word against the son of man he shall be forgiven him but unto him that blasphemeth against the holy ghost we shall be released after the death the resurrection and ascension of jesus he shall not be forgiven whosoever shall speak a word against the son of man in his earthly ministry because this was jesus speaking in the gospel of luke chapter 12 verse 10 he says he shall be forgiven him if you shall speak a word against me against christ in his earthly ministry he shall be forgiven him but unto him that blasphemeth against the holy ghost the comforter that shall be released he shall not be forgiven he shall not be forgiven so blasphemy of the holy ghost is rejection of christ because the holy spirit is the power behind salvation this is the, this is the power responsible for salvation this is the power responsible for the delivery of salvation this is the power responsible for the establishment of the church this is the power responsible for the stability of spiritual israel so rejection of that spirit is rejection of christ and rejection of christ is rejection of salvation it's rejection of salvation so every believer must be very careful of the ministry of the holy spirit not to blaspheme against the holy spirit and not to grieve the spirit of god every man must be very careful of the ministry of the holy spirit in fact teachings of the holy spirit and the mystery of the holy spirit is the most sensitive mystery in the kingdom of christ and i can call it the most vital the most vital ministry in the kingdom of christ because we are in the end time move of the spirit of god we are currently in the end time move of the power of the holy spirit of the living god the gospel of john chapter 15 verse 26 john chapter 15 verse 26 says but when the comforter is come whom i will send unto you from the father even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the father he shall testify of me that was jesus speaking to his disciples it says when the comforter is come whom i will send unto you from the father that means the spirit of god is sent by the father and the son the spirit of god is sent by the father and the son and that means the spirit of god 
is the spirit of the father as well as the spirit of christ the holy spirit is the spirit of god the father and the spirit of christ because this spirit proceed from the father and from christ please look at the gospel of john chapter 16 verse 14 to 15 it says he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall shew it unto you all things that the father as am i therefore said i that it shall take of mine and shall shew it unto you so all the possessions of the father belongs to christ and the spirit of christ which is the spirit of god will reveal all the possessions all the mysteries all the inheritance of the father unto us the spirit shall reveal the mysteries of god unto the church so the spirit is from the father and that spirit is from christ the spirit is from the father and that spirit is from christ so christ paid the price of his blood so that the father can release his spirit to the church so we have the spirit now moving mightily in the church and through the church through this by the sacrifice of christ jesus the spirit is moving in the church and through the church by the sacrifice of jesus so through the price of the blood of jesus we have access to the ministry of the spirit of god so the spirit is identified with the father and with the son the spirit is identified with god the father and with christ in the gospel of matthew chapter 28 verse 19 to 20 it says go ye therefore that was jesus giving his disciples the great commission it says go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost you see in the name of the father of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world amen i am with you always even unto the end of the world by his spirit so christ jesus is with the church by his spirit so the spirit was involved in the commissioning of the church the spirit was involved in the commissioning of the church the great commission will not be effective and efficient without the spirit of god because we need the spirit of god to fulfill the mandate of christ on earth without the spirit of god the christ cannot fulfill the mandate of christ on earth without the spirit of christ listen get what i'm saying the without the spirit of christ in the church the church cannot fulfill the mandate of christ on it so we need the spirit of christ to fulfill the mandate of christ and the mandate of christ is the mandate of god go ye into the world and teach all nations the gospel of christ baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost so without the name of the holy ghost the baptism is not effective the baptism is not efficient the baptism is not potent you need the name of the father of the son and of the holy ghost this is the same god but manifesting in three persons three different persons In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. Yes, Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. It says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. You need the communion of the Holy Ghost. To receive the grace of the Lord Jesus and the love of God. 
Your communion, your fellowship with the Spirit of God will stir up the grace of the Lord Jesus that is upon you. If you want to multiply that grace, increase that grace. And increase the expression of the grace of the Lord Jesus that is upon you. You must fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And by the grace also, the love of God will be increased in you. The agape love of God will build up in you. So you need the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to stir up the grace of the Lord Jesus that is upon you. And to stir up the agape love of God that is present in you. So the Spirit of God was involved in the benediction released by Apostle Paul. The Spirit of God is involved in the benediction that is released to the church. There is a benediction. And you must understand the mystery behind this divine benediction. So the Spirit of God is involved. The Lord Jesus is involved. The grace of the Lord Jesus. The God the Father is involved. The love of the God the Father is involved. The communion of the Holy Spirit of God is involved. So the Trinity work together. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit work together in the unity of purpose to reinforce and build up the church to reinforce and fortify the spiritual pillar of the church hallelujah apostle paul said to the christians at ephesus in ephesians chapter 2 verse 18 for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the father through christ jesus we both have access by one spirit which is the spirit of god unto the father god the father so you can see the three of them working together in the unity of purpose without the spirit of god we cannot have access to god without the holy spirit we cannot have access to god and that holy spirit is working mightily in, in our life today we can easily live a balanced Christian life by the help of the Spirit of God. A balanced Christian life by the help of the Spirit of God. Apostle Paul said to the Christians at Galatia in Galatians chapter 4 verses, And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father, crying, Abba, Father crying Abba Father. That cry is not a cry of agony. That cry is a cry of fulfillment. The Spirit is crying in us, Abba Father, so that we can fulfill the mandate of God on earth. The Spirit is crying in us so that we can have passion for the things of the, of the kingdom. The Spirit is crying in us so that we can burn for God and be born for God. We can burn in the realm of the spirits for God. As the spirit is crying in us, we carry the fire of the Holy Ghost. And we can easily demonstrate the power of God on it. And because he has sons, God has sent for the spirit of his son into your heart, crying about Father. Without these spirits, you cannot become a son in this kingdom. We are adopted and we've been adopted into the kingdom of christ by the spirit of christ that is present in us this is the spirit of his son and this is the spirit of sons you must carry the spirit of his son for you to become a son it is the spirit that will deliver you from the realm of servant and take you into the realm of son so we have the realities of sonship and we can manifest the realities of sonship by the help of the spirit of god apostle peter also discovered this mystery and he put it down in his epistle in the epistle of first peter chapter 1 verse 1 to 2 he says peter an apostle of jesus christ to the strangers scattered throughout pontus galatia cappadocia asia and bithynia elect according to the foreknowledge of god the father through the sanctification of the spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of jesus christ grace unto you and peace be multiplied through the sanctification of the spirit says elect according to the foreknowledge of god the father through the sanctification of the spirit 
You need the sanctification of the spirit. The spirit will help you to live a sanctified life. A life of righteousness and holiness. Practical righteousness and holiness. Not just theoretical righteousness and holiness. The spirit of God will help you to live a life of practical righteousness and holiness. And this is what we call the sanctification of the spirit. You can easily live a life of sanctification. Through the spirit of Christ, you can live the life of Christ on earth. Through the spirit of Christ, there is a spirit that helped Christ to live that life. There is a spirit that was upon Christ and present in Christ. That spirit helped Christ in his earthly ministry to pay the price of his blood. So you can also engage that spirit to pay any price on earth for the sake of the kingdom. For the advancement and the expansion of the kingdom of Christ on it. You can easily work for that kingdom by engaging the spirit of the kingdom. Without the spirit of the kingdom, you cannot work for the kingdom. You need the spirit of the kingdom. And that spirit is the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, which is present in the church. And as you engage that spirit, you will come to the full knowledge of Christ. You will live a life of obedience. And the grace of God, as well as this peace of God, will be multiplied unto you. The grace of God and the peace of God shall be multiplied in your life and your ministry. Through the sanctification of the spirit. Through the sanctification of the Spirit. So you need the ministry of the Holy Spirit to walk on it. To demonstrate the life and the ministry of Christ on it. Because the Holy Spirit of God is identified with the person and the activity of the Godhead. The activity of the Godhead is the activity of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah.